philosophy changed at all uh, regarding that position? We want to have 22 good starters, so it's not like uh, we're sitting there going, Let, let's have really bad players at a certain position. Um, I think like when you look at our defense and the role of the linebackers, you know, Coach Schwartz, who obviously a phenomenal defensive coach for us, the three off the ball, they're all three off the ball linebackers. So the definition of what our linebackers are doing have changed with Coach Gannon. Um, and again, we got to find players that fit our coach's scheme. That that's the most important thing. That we're finding players that fit what we're trying to do offensively, defensively on special teams. Um, obviously, TJ had a heck of a year, a really good year. Uh, we got a bunch of other young players at the position, and um, we'll just see what happens in free agency in the draft. But um, we're we're great in linebackers, just like we're great in every other position. When it comes to the left to right, the last time we talked to you, right to the left. Last time we talked to you at the end of the season, you and Nick were very confident saying Jalen's going to be your guy. After a month of, you know, obviously more evaluation and research, do you still feel that way? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think that when you talk about all the things we talked about at the end of the season, nothing's changed. Uh, I think what really has changed for us is the opportunity to add. You know, this is a great time of year for the Philadelphia Eagles, for us, for our staff and being here and really getting everyone involved in the draft process. Um, start of free agency is up and coming. And so um, we got to continue to add good players. We got to continue to make sure that we're doing everything we can to maximize our players' ability to be successful. Um, and certainly that starts at the quarterback position with Jalen. I'm, I'm going I'm to come. I'm going to go like this. It's going to be orderly. With Jalen, it was reported that he had that ankle surgery after the season. Can you provide an update and uh, expect a timeline on when he might be back on the field? Yeah, I think, um, you know, for injuries, from an injury perspective, rather not get into injuries because that probably opens the door on all of them, but um, really optimistic about um, his readiness for the off-season program. I just said that, and then I just did it. Uh, it's great. Howie, how much do you balance how successful Stout's been in, in developing talent versus spending maybe a premium pick on an offensive lineman when you know you have the coaching jazz? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, Coach Stoutlin, um, we go back a long time, him and I, and um, very, very uh, fortunate to have him as our offensive line coach and working with him to do, make sure we get the right players. But, you know, as he would say this, and not taking away, he's, he's the best offensive line coach in the NFL, you know, not trying to insult anyone, but that's how we feel. And uh, we got to give him talented guys. You know, at the end of the day, these coaches could be uh, as great as they possibly can be, but without talent, you know, it doesn't help. So when we talk about players, we need, still need players with traits. You know, it's hard to be an offense line. It's not a natural thing to be moving backwards while guys are coming at you forwards, and especially the elite athletes that are on defense. So um, those guys are hard to find. You know, you don't find them in any round. Obviously, like, there are going to be guys on the third day that we think have some unusual traits that we'd be interested in. Um, but really, when you think about the guys who are really successful, uh, you're talking about guys who have something unusual about them. And so um, we'll continue to keep looking for those guys because it's important to us. Now, losing Ian Cunningham and Brandon Brown, what's the plan to replace them? And how does the timing affect the draft process? Yeah, you know, um, I miss those guys. I miss those guys already. Um, those guys are people that um, not only did we rely on professionally, but personally just um, people I really enjoyed being around friends and uh, it's hard for me because you see these guys and they have an opportunity to kind of help themselves and their families but at the same time you know it doesn't really help the Eagles and especially the timing of this which you know I think I think it's something maybe that we got to talk about going forward um, about losing guys during this draft process especially in your conference one in your division um, that's not ideal um, in terms of how we're going to address it you know, I think that we're in the middle of this process right now to stop this process and really get the right people and get the right structure in place. We probably got to take a step back, which we're not going to do right now. You know, we're just not in that mode. So um, we have a lot of good people in our building. We have a lot of people ready to step up. Um, you know, we've been in, in situations where, you know, in 2016, we had, we had a decimated personnel department and we were able to have a good off season. So I'm, I, there's no excuses for that. Very confident. And obviously, you know, we had all the reports, so we know what they think. And um, they may know a little bit about what I think, too, which isn't great. I'm coming. I'm coming. How valuable is it that you know what Nick wants in his schemes and yet you have three first round picks and salary cap flexibility for this off season? I think that when you look at the first year with a coaching staff and their willingness, especially this coaching staff, to take some of the guys that we have and say, let me see how this guy looks in my system. And now instead of having hypothetical situations, you have tape on that, you have film on that, and we can walk through, all right, this is what 
what we thought about this guy, this is how he fits. That's huge in terms of evaluating our own team, which is the first thing we got to do. We got to evaluate our own team. And then you talk about those picks, but it's not just those picks. It's utilizing the cap space on guys that fit our scheme. It's utilizing the other draft picks on guys who fit our scheme. It's if we make a trade, finding guys that fit what we're trying to do offensively and defensively and going from there. I'm going. I'm going. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, okay, that's fair. So, you know, your defensive, Gotta adjust. Your defensive coordinator is interviewing for, for head coaching jobs. Can you, how do you safeguard against overfitting for the scheme as opposed to just getting the push? Yeah, he, he's a phenomenal coach, a phenomenal person, and, and really um, excited that we're going to have him back um, because he, he we're probably renting him. He's that good of a coach and that good of a person. Um, but I think when we look at it, you know, like uh, the way that we're playing defense and the way that he wants to play defense and our coaches want to, it's something that's sustainable. It's not like we're drafting guys for specific roles that won't adjust if in the future we had to do something different. And uh, I think that's important because we don't want to get in a situation where, you know, if we lose one person, now all of a sudden we got to start over from scratch. Uh, we can't do that. You can't do that in this league. Um, and so I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. How, how do you address, um, or how do you differ differentiate between what you guys might be able to do in free agency because you have the money that you haven't had in past years with what you can get out of the draft? Well, I think the order of operations matters here, right? So you're talking about you'll have free agency, you'll have the opportunity to see where you are, but you also don't want to get in a situation where that, that you don't take the best player, that you don't take a guy who's really good just because you address something in free agency. So I think what free agency does is it allows us to check boxes so we don't feel the pressure to maybe feel like we have to do something, um, assuming that it works out in free agency, and that's kind of how we'll look at it. How are you in history, doing job? The recent history of teams that have three or maybe more first-round picks, it's kind of a mixed bag, maybe not what those teams had hoped in retrospect. Have you done a lot of research on that, or is there something to be gleaned from it? Yeah, thanks for reminding me about the bad results. Um, I think that, no, 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 no. I think that, you know, when you, the draft as a whole is like that, right? It goes in the first round, and obviously you can break it down 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 32, and the percent, it's not like it's 100%. It's not like you're picking in the top five, it's 100%. So you're going to have those numbers. I think what allows you to do is allows you to have more shots at really good players, really talented players, gives you more flexibility to move up and down the draft board. It gives you more ammunition to decide if at some point you wanted to trade a pick for a player. And that's what we're really looking for. You know, I, when you you think about the National Football League, it's all about resource allocation. So it's basically everyone, every team has the same salary cap number. Basically, every team has a number of draft picks. If you can get an edge either by creating cap room or by getting more draft picks, now you have more shots to take. And so I think that's what we're really excited about is that we got more shots than we've had in the past couple of years. You have to make three first-round picks is what I'm getting at, though. Like, you have the ammunition there, no. right? So, okay. No. How, Howie, how do you evaluate the quarterback, quarterback draft? I'm coming down. I'm sorry. How do you evaluate the quarterback draft class as a whole? Uh, you know, we're in the middle of that evaluation. I think it's really important to see guys throw live um, as you're evaluating quarterbacks. We'll get that chance. If they let us down in the lower bowl to watch guys, I think there'll be a bunch of fans. So maybe Coach and I will mix in with the fans a little bit. Um, but I, I, I always feel like the public perception is it's, it always goes one way or the other. This is a great quarterback draft. This is a terrible quarterback draft. And it's usually somewhere in the middle. Um, but to say that we have our final judgments on any position group at this time, we're just starting kind of getting all the information together so we can make good decisions. Howie, are you in the middle right now? Are you guys still uh, renegotiating a contract for Miles Sanders? And if not, how does, how's the status of that? If not, are you guys feeling as you guys have to readjust your draft strategy to find another running back to replace him in the future if it doesn't sign? We'll never discuss contract negotiations with any player. It's just kind of private business, the player's business, really, and we want to keep that as private as we can. Miles, a heck of a player, heck of a person. You know, I think you saw a lot, too. We had guys who were in their fourth year last year. Whether you go back and you look at Sweaty and you look at Dallas and you look at Avante and you look at Jordan, guys like that, um, maybe I'm missing a couple of guys, who even became better in their fourth year in the league. And so 
Um, you know, he, we haven't even seen everything Miles can give this team. Obviously, he's been really productive. I know he wants to get in the end zone as well. Um, but I think the best is yet to come for Miles. Now you wouldn't be doing your due diligence if you didn't you know, look well at every position well, uh, around the league, especially quarterback. Bruce Arian said yesterday he doesn't expect a top-tier quarterback to be wrestled free. So how do you view that market, and where do you stand in regards to Deshaun Watson and the possibility that he can be? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the second part. Stand in regards to Deshaun Watson and the possibility that he can be uh, traded for him. Well, I think it goes to the question that we started this press conference on. You know, um, we have Jalen Hurts, who is a 23-year-old quarterback who led his team to the playoffs, and he's going to get better and better and better. He's going to do everything possible to get better, and we got to do our part in that. Um, in terms of uh, players on different teams, no matter what position, don't feel comfortable, can't talk about players on other teams. Um, what's going on in the league? Um, you know, I think that's that's part of what you, we missed here the last couple of years. I think you you kind of come here and you kind of start hearing some some things about what's going on at each positions, um, and you just try to gather information. I'm not talking about the quarterback position. I'm talking about in general. Uh, you try to gather information about what's going on and what the opportunities there are to improve our football team. I'll come back at this. Well, I, I, when you look at Quez, I think Quez ha, had a heck of a year, really, when you look at him and really uh, transitioning to a position he didn't play in college as a slot receiver. Um, the guy's extremely talented, extremely hardworking, you know. Um, we talked about at the end of the season, we need Jalen to take another step. You know, we need Jalen to do some of the things that we drafted him to do. He knows that. There's no secret about that. We've told him the same things. Um, and I guess after that, it's opportunity. Now, you know, when we go through this draft, obviously it's a really good draft class. We have 10 picks. Uh, we have nine through the first five rounds. So you'll have opportunities in the draft where you'll go, hey, that, that guy's a good fit for what we're doing offensively. That guy's a good receiver. We'll see how free agency goes as well. How does pass rush for second to last round picks change anything about your process in the lead up to the draft? Well, I, we have to constantly evolve our process. I think if we're sitting here saying, like, everything's perfect and everything's work, I mean, that, that would be disingenuous. And so, like, we have to constantly evolve and figure out, and we really try to do that a lot in May, June, July, figure out what we've done right, what we've done wrong, what the rest of the league's done right, what the rest of the league's done wrong. And so I don't think that changes with the number of first-round picks we have. I think it, it just heightens the opportunity that we have. Well, the first part about that, the draft class, it, it was a good start, you know, but I think um, when you look at this league, the most important thing is consistency over time, not being flash in the pans, doing things and getting better. Uh, we talk about the jump from year one to year two and how important it is to improve. I think about the things these guys are going through right now. You know, a guy like Devontae or Landon, where you know, maybe Landon's not a good example because he was rehabbing, but Devontae, who's going through all, you know, the pro days and having all the Zoom interviews, and he's not really focused on the things he can do to get better. He's focused on where he's going to go, how he's going to live, who's going to come with him, where he's going to function. Now he doesn't have to do that. Now it's all ball for him. So uh, we expect a big jump. But it also talks to the character and the football intangibles those guys had, and I think our scouts did a great job of of, of doing that and bringing those to the front. I'm, I'm coming back. It's hard to find offensive linemen who can move and who can bend and. Um, the amazing thing is, is Andre Andre's working out every day right now. Um, I mean, I'm not allowed to really talk to him about anything, but you can see. I mean, he he looks great. I mean, upper body, lower body. He's really determined. He wants to play. You know, I think that just to think that he can only play left tackle limits him and, and probably does him a disservice. Um, but having a really good offense line is important. Having depth on the offense line is important. We started 15 guys this year. Now, I'm cheating on that number a little, Jimmy, because we started five guys in the last game of the year. But I like when I say 15 guys. Um, but at a minimum, we started 10 in games that we really needed them. And it just shows, like, you can never have enough offense linemen. This pass rush was second to last in sacks last year. What must be done to fix it? And is this edge rusher class the strength of the draft? Um, I've, I've, I got to learn from some of my mistakes I've made in the past. So, uh, I'm, you know, in terms of talking about strengths and of a draft class, I, I don't, I don't know that I want to go there. Um, there are good players at every position in this draft. In terms of the sack number, it's also how you want to play, right? And for us, we want to get pressure on the quarterback. 
It's not only in the sack numbers. You know that, Zach. There's other ways to judge that. But the bottom line is we didn't get enough pressure on the quarterback. We got to have pressure on the quarterback. We got to continue to have pressure on the quarterback. It's a priority to us. Um, we'll have opportunities this offseason to do it. And I would be very surprised if we didn't do something there. Famous last words. Definitely going to regret those. Sweet. All right. Thanks, guys. Then I'm telling you who we interviewed and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not going there. There's some good. There's some good shots though. Nick, have you gotten any indication from Jason Kelsey on what his plans are for next season? Um, we've been in, we've been in con communication. We're hopeful. Um, we're hopeful. Uh, and there's been no final decision made. Uh, the keg has been sent to his house, uh, and uh, I, I think it got delivered today, uh, courtesy of uh, Lower Marion Beverage Beverages. So I appreciate them uh, helping out with that. Nick, with your offensive line, if Jason does decide to come back um, at left guard and right guard, you'll have Isaac coming back, you'll have Jack Driscoll, you'll have Landon, obviously. I'm sure you're going to say that's a good problem to figure out, but do you kind of have an idea of how those pieces might Yeah, I mean, a lot. there's a lot of things that are dependent on that, right? you got to go through the offseason, you got to go go through all the things, and everybody's got to get back from, from injuries, get back into the, the swing of things, see where the – there's just a lot of things. We don't have to make that decision for, for quite some time. So um, it is. It's, it's, I, I was fortunate to become, come to a team that had great offense and defensive line depth and that we went through some – we had some bumps and bruises this year that we, we really needed to rely on that. And so it is a great, it is a great problem to have the, the depth that we have there. And I know a lot of guys are going to be uh, – Able to play and ready to play and want to play and uh, and we'll have to make we'll have to make a decision on who those guys are and what the right lineups are as, as we go through it. That's a hypothetical uh, scenario. Like obviously we think through everything um, and we have some good options there. Um, and and again we're we're exploring even more options through the free agency and through the draft. So um, not something we have to decide right away, but we feel like we have good options. Season as, as he had some more time uh, to look back at Jalen Hurts, the totality of his, his season as a starter. What did you make of it? Yeah, you know, we're still we're still going through that process of evaluating our season. You know, it starts with it starts early on, and it, and you kind of you go through the things of the write ups of the players, where what the needs are of the team, this and that, and then you start watching each an individual cut up of of all your your different concepts and different things that you that you did, and as you watch more and more, and as you think about it more and more, you're just pleased with the uh, progression that that Jalen has made, and I think that's common of, of who Jalen Hurts is as a, as a player and as a quarterback that he just continues to get better whether that's from uh, Alabama to Oklahoma or Oklahoma to his first year in the NFL or first year to second year and we just know that progression is going to continue and 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 it's it's not just because you know we've seen the progression go like that it's because of the person that he is and the um he loves football. This guy loves football, and he's just willing to do the things that he needs to do to get better. And that's why he does continue to get better. And and guys like he's tough. He's competitive. Um, he's got high. He's got high football IQ. He's got high. Fo he's got high uh, general character in himself. And and those are things that we're looking for in the draft prospects that we're uh, that we're going through right now. Like. Do these guys have these things in their in their body or in their DNA? Because those are our, when our experiences. Those are the guys that have that reached their ceiling. And so Jalen Hurts has all those things, and he's going to only continue to get better. And and when we looked at all at all our tape and we evaluated in our tape again, like we're we're still going through it, you could see the progression of him getting better throughout the year in, in different in different things. And uh, you know he led us to the playoffs, and obviously um, we want to go further than that. And uh, and we're, we're really confident that Jalen's a guy that can and help us do that. The rest of the playoffs and the Super Bowl and the throwing off, the passing offenses and the throwers change or make you evaluate Jalen in the position? No, I, you know, as you, as you go, as you watch any uh, high-level football, right, or at the end of the year, right, whether it's the Super Bowl or the AFC or the NFC Championship game, whether it's the Final Four in the uh, – 
um, in the bowl in the bowl series or if it's the state championship games, right? You, what you see is great offense and defensive lines, and you see great quarterback play, right? And and so I don't think that's a secret, and that's and that's what we see at all at all levels. Um, you know, you uh, we have a lot to improve on as as an entire team. Um, and but like I said, with you know with the question earlier, I just see him continuing to grow and so you know what you want want them to do is you want to make good accurate throws and good and good quick decisions and I think you see throughout the NFL is a common theme that is becoming even more common of you know quarterbacks playing long and playing uh, and continuing to play good I mean you saw that with with Tom Brady obviously throughout his entire career he played he played had an unbelievable career and just continued to get better. Um, you know, I was able to see that firsthand with Philip Rivers. You know, to be to come into middle of his career and then just see um, him get better as as I was as I was there uh, with him, um, and just see you know how how is a guy that's um, getting older getting better? And at that position, it's because he's seen everything and they they've went through everything. They've seen every different coverage that they could see against this particular concept. And so, and that's what, and that's what we're, you know, we're hopeful that Jalen continues his progression upwards with the amount of reps that he gets. And you do, and you try to do as many things as you can in the off season to simulate that. Um, but, you know, again, are we, a, we're, we're no, not by any means a, a finished product. And, and so we're really, you know, I know what, what the, you know, the, the quarterbacks, how the quarterbacks played and, and got their teams to the championship games and, and to the Super Bowl. Um, and we know that that's, that's what we got to do to get ourselves there. And I think Jalen's the type of guy that's going to maximize his potential, again, because of who he is uh, as a football player. Jake, Jake, what is your play the offense, you know, schematically and, and doing those things over the course of the offseason? How much is it, like, fixing – the offense itself versus finding things with Jalen in mind. Like, are you are you looking back at other like run based quarterback offense? Yeah. Uh, again, it's always a. It's first. It's evaluating uh, yourself and and um, evaluating your your scheme and how do you make your scheme better. And then it's hey, well, maybe we're a little deficient in this area. And we all have to be honest with ourselves of what we're deficient in. And whether that's me as a head coach and in the messaging to the team or anything, that, that what am I deficient in? How do I make us better in that area? All right, as, as an offensive coordinator and, and as an offensive staff, what are we deficient in and how we get ourselves better at that? And so that's, the, that's kind of the process of like, hey, let's evaluate our stuff. How can we do our stuff better? And then what can we take from different uh, areas and, and and get better at that at that particular thing, and so that's kind of the the progression right now of what we're what we're going through, um, and and so again, in our in our message in that is like in our message to the players too, and our my end of year meetings with them is like, hey, if we can all identify um, one issue that we have or one thing that we have and and make that better. Imagine how good our, uh, much better our team will be as a whole if all of us, coaches, players, people in the front office, can take that one of our inefficiencies and get a little bit better at it. And so that's not, you know, that's the messaging we have throughout the entire year. How do we get a little bit better, at, uh, you know, each day? And that's what we're trying to live by right now in the off season. The whole idea of having a basketball hoop brought in here. How did that come about, and what's the point of it? Um, you know, I've, I've become a Villanova fan as we've, uh, if I've been living over there, so it has a Villanova uh, backboard on it. But you know, so last year, I don't, I don't think everyone liked my rock paper scissors stuff last year. Um, no, but all, in all seriousness, like, if we can figure out when we get in there a little bit of their competitiveness. If we can get a little sense of that, that's a plus, right? We'll do anything to figure out some of the answers to the, the, um, to the test, right? Whether it's, hey, can we figure out a little bit more about the player's toughness? Can we figure out a little bit more about the player's competitiveness? Can we figure out a little bit more about the player's love for football? Can we figure a little, like, we'll, we'll do what we need to do to do that. And so do you always get that answer um, by shooting five baskets uh, before they start off? No. Um, but in my past, I think uh, I've told the story about my my uh, experience with Gardner Minshew when he came into Indianapolis and the and the uh, the shooting that we did now it was on a 10 foot hoop and uh, we were in our indoor facility shooting baskets um, and I got to know a lot about him from that and look at it benefited us this year just me knowing a little bit about him and what makes him tick a little bit um, but 
again, you, you might come away from that and say, I didn't get anything from that. But one thing that we do realize that it does is it, it is a good icebreaker. It does lower the guard of the player a little bit to know that, you know, we like to have fun. We, you know, we like to compete. And now let's get into the interview and get more of that information of what we want from, uh, you know, about your love of the game, your knowledge of the game, et cetera. We have not yet. I'm not in a rush to do that. Uh, but that, that that's a that's a – you know, Jim Bob did a lot for us, and so uh, and I valued the, the things that he did, and I know the the entire offensive staff valued the things that, that Jim Bob did. So um, that's not an easy that's not an easy person to replace, but we'll uh, um, we'll do what we need to do to to replace Jim Bob. And I, obviously, I'm happy for him that you know he's back into a, a the pass game coordinator role because no doubt in my mind he'll be a he'll be a coordinator again soon and hopefully a head coach uh, soon after that. So. Yeah, same same thing. You know, we're going through the the process of where we're efficient, where we're inefficient, and and try to improve those things. And so, you know, in this particular case, it's identifying uh, players. Um, again, the you know, obviously the guys we're looking at have talent, right? But then identifying the things that. You know the, the things that may, you might not see on always on tape: the toughness, the competitiveness, the love of football, um, the football IQ, and the character. Um, you know to be able to go through the ups and downs of the season. And so that's not just a, a defensive thing. That's all. The, that's through. That's with everybody. But and it's the same thing that I challenge our players to do. Right? What's their What's our weakness? How are we getting it better? Because um, if we can do that as a whole, as a team, uh, we know how much strides we can make as a, as a as an entire team. In your evaluation of Jalen Hurts, you know, potential going forward, like how much do you weigh, you know, the possible additions you can make, like, you know, a receiver or running back, tight end, whatever, you know, as far as how much better he can get? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know that as you as you go through, you're gonna you're gonna lose. This team's never gonna look the same, and so obviously you're always in this mission and this um, to to make your team as as good as you possibly can, and with the, with as much talent as you can, with the right type of guys as you can, um, to be able to handle the ups and downs of the season. And so it, naturally, as the team gets better around him, um, you know, he's just going to continue to continue to excel. In our in our opinion, I think that's just just natural as you get as you have if you have good players around you you're going to continue to excel and so why was Jalen able to do some of the things he did uh this year is because we had a strong nucleus around him with the offensive offensive line um you know that really helped that that that's huge when you can have a center like Jason Kelsey be able to to uh you know help identify defenses and you can have a very be very confident in your right side and your left side because of tackles like Lane Johnson and, and Jordan Mulata and, and then have a, a guy like Devontae Smith to throw the ball to and the speed with Quez, Quez Watkins and have the running game with the four backs that we had there and Dallas Goddard to that it's shorthanded. So, um, you know, you're always looking to improve that. And uh, but we know that we have a good, uh, strong base of our team um, that we're really confident in. And we just look to get that better because everybody succeeds as Jalen, you know, as, as the talent gets better around him. He gets better, and that and that's just not Jalen. That's the entire team. How's the combine doing for you as the head coach? And some head coaches aren't coming. Why is it important for you to be here? Um, you know, it, I think it's I, I just I value this time to be able to look the player in the eye, and 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 yeah, uh, you don't get. It's not like you get that with every uh, player. You you have a certain amount of formal interviews that I'm able to, to sit in there for. Um, but you're able to sit there, look him in the eye, uh, be able to hear, see his body language, uh, see how he answers different questions, and then to be to see him work out in person. Again, this is a piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, there's there's many pieces of the puzzle that go into to get. You know, we have. We have uh, 30 visits coming up, and we have pro days and private workouts and Zoom interviews. Like, there's so many different opportunities to, to, to meet the player. I guess, like, I'm not going to be able to go to every pro day. I'm not going to be able to go to every, uh, 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 you know, private, private workout or anything like that. So it's, able, it's good to be able to get my eyes on him here. It's good to be able to see, you know, I'm 6'3". It's good to be able to stand next to him and say, oh, this guy's sick, or look at his legs and be like, oh, he's got thick legs or whatever it is. Like, it's just good to be around the guys and, and uh, see him work out and, and get to put a, put a face and, and to, you know, who you've been watching on tape. You and how 
know we've both talked about Jalen Hurts and how you feel like he's going to continue to progress because of who he is off the field, on the field, etc. What do you want to see specifically next year as that continued progression for him? I think when you look at a at, when you look at a quarterback, you know the the there, there's many different things you're looking at, and but the four main things you're always looking at is is accuracy. You're looking at decision making at the ability to create, and you're seeing if he's above the line in arm strength. Um, well, I think there's, there's no question that Jalen Hurts uh, has the arm strength to make all the throws. He's, he's well above the line um, to be able to make the throws, in whether it's uh, Atlanta in the first game of the year or whether it's Philly the last game of the year with, with some different type of weather. So we're confident in that. He has amazing ability to create uh, when whether things break down and the receiver may not get open or uh, there's a breakdown in the offensive line. And what we saw throughout the year is that not only can he create with his legs and make big plays with his legs, as the year went on, you saw him become a weapon when he would when he would move in the pocket, create in the pocket, and find his receivers down the field. You saw us create some explosive plays that way. Um, and so those two things, you know, uh, are, are a non-issue, and they're not, and there's just things that he's going to continue to excel at. Um, you just want to see him continue to get better with his accuracy, and you want to see him continue to get better with his decision-making. I mentioned it earlier, you know, decision-making, it's about, you know, your mind, you know, recalling the things that have happened in the past and knowing, okay, last time I saw this, I went here with the ball, here we go. Oh, shoot, last time I saw this, I went here with the ball, but this this happened, and I did this. So it's just put it – He's just got to continue to get more and more and more reps, right? He's, he's, he's had a full season and a couple other games. So it's, what, 17, 21 games that he's had uh, of this, you know. And so I, I, he's just got to continue to see that um, and, and to be able to speed up his processing over and over and over again. And I have no doubt because of who Jalen is that he'll continue to do that. And, and then as far as his accuracy, um, he's going he's gonna to continue. I know he'll continue to get better at that, again, because – he works at it and so by no means am I saying that is uh, those are the things that we know he, he needs to work on he knows he needs to work on and that they're that I know have no doubt that he'll continue to get better at right. Thanks, uh, yeah you know I you get you're upset anytime somebody leaves that is valuable to the organization. Um, you know, obviously he he's in the in the front office. I'm with the coaching staff, but obviously there's a lot of communication back and forth. So you're upset you, anytime you lose anybody good, whether that's a player, whether that's a coach, whether that's somebody in the front office. But obviously very happy for him and in his development um, and his advancement in his career. I'm, I wish him nothing but the best. I wish it would have been with the Jets, but uh, it's with the Giants. So uh, I wish him the best of luck. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nick.